Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to finish up what I had started in this uh, lecture, lecture 7, that in which I was covering problem 3.14. Uh, I started to do a little bit more work on that. This is the um, uh, the cannonball problem where we have a we have a formula here which is it uh, gives the the position of the um, or the height of a cannonball when it's shot straight up in the air that's s of t so the position or the height at time t is given by this formula and uh, so let's just continue with this and we have uh, so we can calculate it using this formula the other way to calculate the position of the cannonball is to use this uh, these two formulas within a loop these are uh, within a and this is the called the simulation and so uh, at each uh, increment of time which is represented by DT so if it's a millisecond right DT would be a thousandth of a second so for each small uh, increment in time we can uh, uh, estimate a new position of the uh, of the cannonball based on its previous position plus its current velocity times its um, times the amount of time that's transpired and then because there's acceleration due to gravity we need to update the velocity so the velocity is the previous velocity plus the acceleration due to gravity times the amount of time that has uh, transpired once again. So I am going to take this uh, table out. I'm not going to look at that. That's the simulation. This is the formula. Take this out. And um, let's go ahead and um, do this. Here's the time set step of uh, 0 0.001 seconds. We ask the user for an initial velocity. That's done here. What is the initial velocity of the cannonball? We read it in here. And um, we, we initialize the variable velocity to the initial velocity. So this velocity is going to change as we progress through the simulation, but the initial velocity will remain the same. Now the initial velocity is used in the equation, so the initial velocity is never is does not change and is used repeatedly each time we use the equation. But the initial velocity is not used in the uh, in the simulation. All right, so let's uh, let's start here. We have um, uh, one thing that we covered in the lab for those people who were in lab is that we we wanted to we figured out a way to uh, conveniently print the height of the cannonball at uh, each second is so what we do there is we we declare a variable called seconds initialize it to zero and um, each time the time reaches seconds we print out our information and then we increment the number of seconds so that means as time uh, increments here a small amount through each iteration of the loop, we don't continuously print the data about the cannonball height. We wait until the time reaches the next target, the next number of seconds that we want to, in which we want to print the next uh, set of statistics. So, when the when the time does hit the next seconds, let's uh, print those seconds. That's done here. Then let's print the height of the cannonball that's done here. So I'm working on that right now. And um, let's omit the velocity. I think that's uh, a little dis distracting. So we print. This is the uh, this height here is the simulated height, and the formula height is computed here using the formula given in the book which is right there and then we print the uh, the formula height compared to the to the simulated height then we increment the number of seconds and then when we exit the loop we're going to do the same thing except this time we're going to print uh, the amount of time 
let me go ahead and uh, do this. Whoops. And uh, let's print the, the height, the ball. Let's omit the um, the velocity. Compute the formula height and print the formula height there. Let's see if that builds. Now, one thing that uh, we want to do, I'm going to uh, look at page 67 of the book. And on this page, actually the, the explanation starts on page 66. It's called section 2.6.4, Formatted Output. So on this page, it uh, explains a little bit about how to make writing numbers floating point numbers to this to the console window how to make the the writing of those numbers um, orderly or clean so things line up better so let's uh, let's take a look at that uh, that information so they have something called set w which uh, sets the sets the uh, the width of the next uh, output field. Let's take a look at that. So we would do something like that. So it would be s C out set W and say eight characters. And set W as you can see there it's um, it's underlined, it's undefined. That's because it's inside of a header called IO manip. And uh, we're going to just put that in there. Yeah, save that. Let's check this down here. Now you can see it's not underlined anymore. And i um, not sure actually if I need to do this after I output the string here or whether I whether this this setting will be in effect uh, when I uh, put the seconds. I'm not sure if that's the case. Now we write the second, the height. I think we need to do this each time we output a number. And I'm uh, just going to put that in like that. Actually, let's uh, bring that over. So this set width is only in effect um, for the output of uh, one number. So we need to uh, we need to activate that uh, or invoke that function uh, each time we output a number. Let's go ahead and run that. So we're going to use a hundred meters per second as the initial velocity, and uh <coughs> looks okay. Except uh, we're going to need to modify this. Still it's pretty hard to read. See the number of decimal places displayed after the decimal point varies between numbers. So let's uh, let's fix that. We do that by, s by, by using this set precision. And uh, the set precision is the same as this uh, the set W. Let's take a look at that. This will be set precision. Let's give it a precision of 2. And uh, just try that in each of these, each of these places here. Let's try that. One hundred meters per second. Now you can see things are lining up a little better. And uh, we have to, uh, we're controlling the number of decimal places, but we have the scientific notation. I'd like to uh, get rid of that. Uh, so we use this uh, this command. It's uh, C out fixed, and uh, in fact that that command is um, is carried over through all all. Um, all output operations. We don't need to invoke that each time we uh, output a number. There it is. Now it looks a little bit better.
All right, that's good. It's a little easier to read. This this is not uh, lining up very nicely. We might be able to um, to fix that. Are we setting the width of the field when we print the seconds? I'm not sure. Actually, I see this is. So actually, I'm not going to dig into that. There's a way to line things up, but I'm not going to bother. This is uh, good enough for me. At uh, 20.41 seconds, the ball is just below the ground, minus 0 0.08 meters. And the formula height uh, gives it a value that's close to uh, the ground as well. So you can see here at 20 seconds, uh, the simulated height of 40.1 is close enough to the formula height of 40. And that is, uh, in fact, what we would like to see uh, from you when you submit your, your lab exercise.